on July 2nd, 2024, I resigned from my small private Christian school of five years, even though I was contracted for six. Welcome to Edify by the Word. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Episode 1, Private but Like Public School. We're we'll talking about why private Christian education slowly dies and what our response should be to it generation after generation until the second coming of Christ. The key verse of Edified by the Word was actually recently inspired. It's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. After five years and tolerating the incursion of secular, as well as to a degree, ecumenical influences, including that of the Roman Catholic Church, and dare I say, even to a greater degree, secular humanism, which is really a religion unto itself. We'll talk more about that some other time, or if you've seen a one of my previous videos from a previous podcast, it's Members of Mystery Babylon, Humanism. You get a decent idea there, but much more is to be said. Anyways... Why did I resign? Well, as stated before, but really when it comes down to it, my dear listeners, my brethren, there are lines that must be drawn, and once they are crossed, you must be ready to make sacrifices. In this case, there are things of which I could no longer tolerate, things of which I've brought up, discussed, with leadership, with administration. And as far as I'm concerned, this gradual downward trend will continue unless there is a change. But as far as the conviction that's been put in my heart goes, I can no longer, in my own way, be a part of it and support it. Let's read through the passage really quick. For today's theme passage is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And if you have not listened to me before, well, understand this. This is edified by the word. My ministry has not diverted from, well, the description of this ministry goes as such. History, politics, economy, education, theology, and a little bit of science and technology, as discerned by the Holy Scripture. As discerned by the Holy Scripture. For my dear listeners, if you are being fed only on Sundays, or only online, well then you must be malnourished and starving. No wonder your soul, your spirit, your mind is not at ease, confused, if fearful. Four. Aside from myself, you should be daily nourishing, consuming, being rejuvenated, being transformed by the bread of life, the water of life, the word of the Lord. Edify and uplifting of that of the intellectual and moral faculties, especially in holiness. There is a common term in Christian ministry known as mission or missional drift. In my gross opinion, it's called faithlessness. For we are not being faithful to the word, and we do not abide in the word, we are not sanctified by the spirit of the word, and thus we wander away from our good shepherd. We are less familiar with his voice, and we find Greener, yet poison pastors and pastures. People in places of which corrupt us. Fill us with the doctrines of devils 
with that of Antichrist. And here's the thing, we have to deal with this every single generation until the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ once again to set everything right. But don't be dismayed. The same spirit which guided the prophets, the judges, well, those who were faithful, Christ himself, the apostles, and those of our brethren until this day who would rather die on their knees, prostrate before the Lord, not before man or his, or his institutions. The same spirit of which overcomes the world, that same spirit, the Holy Spirit of our Lord, still may abide with you. But you will only be in the, the comfort and guidance of his spirit if you are in accordance with the word. So be edified. Be transformed. I grew up in homeschooling. I say in homeschooling because it's a lifestyle. From preschool all the way up till middle school. And then I went to a private Christian school. Decent size. I grew up with you know, graduated the class of 63, including myself. Apparently, there are far smaller schools, as I discovered, but when you live in Southern California, that is that is a tiny institution. <laughs> but I discovered uh, how much more minuscule they can become when you go to less populated areas. Anyways, regardless of the numbers, I was there, some of you have heard this before or, or remember the first two years. Excellent. Three-tiered system. Honors, standard, remedial. But then, over one summer, my going into my junior and senior year, the incursion of psychological paradigms that are contrary to the very nature of man as given as revealed in the word and thus what naturally comes is the warping of the nature of God Almighty and what ensues is policies practices academic mythology and philosophy which ends up just a mess. Night and day. Place of learning, of discipline, of maturity, to that of mediocrity, foolishness, and just as many people will say, hoop jumping. Just going through the motions, just doing the things, because that's what the world does. And for those of you who've been alive for more than 13 years and have tried to work or try to get more involved in your church, more involved in school, whatever it may be, you start to notice, yeah, you, you have a pretty good idea or quite uh, <laughs> perhaps traumatized by the phenomenon of hoop jumping. Circus animals, one and all. For all of us, we've all experienced it to some degree for me, I'd rather not, I'd rather not participate in having my students jump through circles. And why? Because it's, well, this euphemism that we call best practices. And according to whom? A bunch of fools with PhDs. No fear of God or man. But they just satisfy their own pride. Or perhaps they do fear men, but let's face it. If we truly knew who and what men are, why be afraid of them? Why be afraid of them? Start with verse number 18, going, to, going into 20. First Peter chapter 1. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, Silver, gold, money, mammon, 
tradition. It's not inherently evil, but let's face it, some, tradi some traditions are stupid. And a number of them are actually more progressive than they give themselves credit for. Ever-changing, going with emotions, going with the flow, every wind and wave. Uncertain, insecure. But traditions indeed are the reflections of the waywardness of the vanity of man. Especially ones of which people don't even remember why or how they're even doing it. Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And that's the perfection of Christ, not us. Verse 20, who verily Christ was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. For what salvation? To repent of your sins and to live life abundantly internally but make no mistake that can be accomplished to a degree here but here's not forever we live in the present but for us we're waiting I'm going to spoil this because it's revealed in the end but let's not for forget I don't understand the point of this bitterness, this animosity towards the generations amongst us, whether it be towards that younger or older. If you want to live, you'll be the next generation in due time. If you're very young, you'll be young. If you're young, you'll be kind of young. And kind of young will be little old. Little old will be old. Little old will be very old. And then very old will be, well, surprisingly alive. But as long as we live, we will all go through the stages of life. What are we, different species? What do you think you're going to be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on forever? You think you're going to be forever a teenager, never going to grow up? I remember the days where two of my teeth were my own. I remember the, the time where my left foot was just as flexible as my right foot. I remember the time in which I had only black hair. Yeah. I'm a younger millennial, and yeah, I got a fair amount of silver. Apparently, it's genetic. Time passes. Time passes. And with that said, the word of the Lord, though, remains the same. It remains the same. Sure, go ahead and turn me off and be like, well, there's not much new here. Fine. Go scroll. Go binge. Go watch some sports ball. Go listen to a song and go numb. In bliss and euphoria. Or drowning your sorrows and your sadness. Listening to the same tune over and over and over again. Of just going through a playlist. Or just go work. Go to the gym. And try to forget everything. For me. And I pray that you. I pray. That you pray for me. That I do not drown out my sorrows. I don't try to distract myself from what goes on in the world. That I try to just close a blind eye to things and say, well, everybody's doing it. Well, it's just the way things are. Well, it's only getting worse. Fun fact, all those three things to a great measure are true. But this is not where hope is. Verse 21. Who by him do believe in God? As that is Christ that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Are you listening to me? Sometimes I listen to myself in this regards. Hope in God. And we all say, I know that, I know that. Oh, shut your mouth. 
whether you're young or whether you're old. Let us humble ourselves and admit. Even those of us who've been saints longer and far more m mature, before we say, I know, I know, I know, we don't know. Because if we knew, we would knew to keep our mouths zipped about such things. And we remember, oh yes, let me go pray, oh yes, yes, let me go study, oh yes. Let me go and sometimes, sometimes, just giving a thankful word or shedding a tear for another soul. Rather than distracting ourselves in this modern world, why do private educators slowly face missile drift? Why do private Christian institutions slowly die? Or <laughs> worse yet, become like public school? Everything I've described. That your faith and hope might be in God. If it's not in God, in the moment, especially when there's tough times, especially when there's confusion, especially when there's uncertainty, especially when there's fear when there's fear. Well, don't be surprised if you start drifting away from him. For the Lord is the one who extends his hands, is, is the Lord. While we were yet sinners, reached out to us, called out to us, died for us. Verse 22. Verse 22. As we engage in home education, which I promote, I don't fully discredit private education yet. For I know for a fact that there are some schools still left that are so ever faithful. And I pray that they continue to be so for as long as I live, if not longer. But know this, my dear listeners. Know this. Regardless of what man and what our establishments do, who is your hope in? Who do you glorify? Verse 22, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Oh, I love the King James Version. So poetic and so authoritative. Let's try to wiggle our way around this one, right? College career. Oops. You ever tried applying for a job? Oh, yeah, by the way, if you haven't caught on yet, there's a lot of fake, <laughs> a lot of fake job ads out there. I hate to break it to you. Your best bet is to go to the to go to the uh, to the uh, to the institutions or the governments or the businesses actual website that's where you're going to see whether or not they're hiring that's where you can make direct contacts and hey, sometimes it's not going to kill you just go up and ask them directly usually franchises tell you go to take go do the online application but you never know but you're open in God. Why am I telling you this? Because currently as we speak, as of Sunday, August 18th, 2024, I am currently unemployed and have been since I resigned. I tell you this why. Because as a man, yes, my pride is hurt. I feel like a failure. I feel in some ways useless. But you know what? I've realized that the Lord is indeed testing me, refining me, humbling me, giving me a strength, a peace of which I have not had before, the kind that I've been that I prayed for a decade ago in my early twenties, hoping, desiring for a faith that would not be easily moved. For indeed, how many of us, how many people do you know? Taken their own lives when they when they lost their jobs. I mean, think about it. We call it our livelihood. So if we lose it. I guess we're dead. That's what the spiritually dead think. Well, my dear listeners, if you 
our fellow sheep, fellow follower, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Put aside such nonsense. Verse 22 once more. Seeing ye have purified your souls. How? In obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. And that's been my prayer and blessing. One of the limitations I put on myself is making sure that I am available regularly, especially Sunday mornings, to worship and fellowship with my brethren. And you know what? The Lord has been faithful in providing for me and for following this for over a decade. And I expect him to continue to do so. To be available, to contact, to reach out, to encourage. I've been away for quite some time. The last post I did was back in November. But it was time I needed to, 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 to be away. So I can allow the word to crush me, to mold me, to build me back up. For you know well, just as I, and by all means, the other. Things getting bad, yes. How bad, how soon, when, we don't know. But if we're honest, if you're not getting ready, well, then I don't know what to say. Private, but like public school. For pri the whole point of being a private institution, the whole point of being, well, let's face it, for us as believers, we should consider ourselves private contractors. Where we lease ourselves out temporarily into the world. For our Heavenly Father, our provider, our strength, our dwelling place is the Lord. Unless we want to behave like a public figure, like a like somebody from the public ward. Not private in the sense of the private sector, which we expect. We live solely for monetary compensation. In case you haven't figured it out yet, Money is uh, not real. Let that sink in, because let's face it, at this point versus a decade ago, most of us, most of us are quite aware that that's true. So let's actually start living that way. And yet the Lord provides. The Lord provides in grand abundance. I take no unemployment, Disability, no assistance. I don't even have health insurance. <laughs> A shout out to MediShare. Please look into that yourself, MediShare. Medical Expense Sharing Ministry. It might work for you, it may not. It's been doing quite well for us. But hey. Just throwing that out there. Anywho. Verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And that's the thing. I'm going to try to wrap this these last three verses up with this. Private but like public school. Is it good to compare what you do to public school? I've said this before. And for most of you, the answer is, well, obviously no, that's such a low bar. There's, you can't be proud of just being even one step above that. Exactly. Here's the thing, private Christian education is supposed to be separate, holy unto the Lord, based on the incorruptible by the word of God, which live in the Bible forever. Instead of what? For man, 
Our history is either rewritten or ignored. Our politics is bread and circuses. Our economy is usury and sleight of hand. Our, th our theology, ooh, our theology is just a bunch of people, for the most part, in our higher institutions, just crying and trying to come up with something new to publish, to sell. Rather than just be plain, as the Lord himself is plain. My advice to you is, before I'm finished speaking, or right after, you better do one of these two things. For your own good and that of your families. Is to pause. Read a, a chapter in scripture, especially one that you may recall or hearing about recently. And praying for at least five minutes, preferably an hour. Trust me, scripture time and prayer time goes a long way. Well, it's not like we do anything that's more productive. You know, I give a very long list of things we do to distract ourselves. Let's be honest with each other, people. Don't be private, but like a public school. Don't be mediocrity prompted, you know, prompt up because quite frankly, people got people would rather not do the hard thing, not do the challenging thing, not do the edifying thing. The fruitful thing, the beneficial thing that requires discipline, sacrifice. That requires us to give without expecting to receive. And why? Why do I tell you this? Verse 24, for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Oh, that sounds such like platitudinous, poetic language, but we know it's true. You've lived longer than a quarter century. You're very psychologically aware. Unless you try to suppress it, of how finite your life is. And for those of you younger than that, if you don't feel that way, Continue. That is your gift. But don't be prideful. And don't lose hope. Don't lose courage when that feeling goes away. You need it for the time that you have now. But when the time, but when you lose it, it is time to put on true courage. Right now, the courage you have is what you need. But don't forsake true strength, true courage. One that comes with a greater matured conviction, commitment. To live life accordingly. That here's the thing, when those lines are crossed, you're not going to sell yourself out. You're not going to lie to your family, lie to your friends, your peers, your enemies. Make excuses. You're not going to be become what you hate. Hypocrisy. Mediocrity, abuse, neglect. Don't be private, but like a public school, for that is the legacy currently, which can be changed, and I pray for it. For literally, as of the last three years at my private school, in the manual, for students and families that we are similar to a public school but we teach the Bible well let's let's be let's be here let's be real here if you are of the incorruptible as the Word of God why would you be similar to that which is corruptible like flesh that is as grass like the flower of grass that falleth away. If you are 
private to separate yourself unto holiness, unto something better, everlasting, a standard of which will not die. How can you be similar? How can you live? How can you act? How can you speak anything like the public sphere, public education, which affirms sin and the wage of sin is death? How can you be like the spiritually dead? Why should you look anything, sound or smell, resemble him in any shape or form? Hypocrisy, hip, hypocrisy. We're going to do a whole other talk on this. But here's a snippet of it. It's a word you don't hear as often as we've had in past decades. Why? Because more and more people act like the world. So there's nothing to be hypocritical about. More and more people, more and more believers, quote unquote, from the very get-go, as congregations, as institutions, act like the world. Verse 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. I know, I know, I've heard this before. In fact, I memorized some of these verses. Well, 2024 is looking really interesting. It's an election year. It's funny and it's tragic at the same time. I mean, really, our political situation is represented by our candidates. I don't need to say anything more. You all know what I'm talking about. If not, you've had more angst about it than I have had. <laughs> but, remember, verse 21, who by him, Jesus Christ, do you do believe in God? that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. And that is not an ambiguous, just, it, oh, it feels good, it sounds good, yes, I know in a vague sense it's true. Read, people, pray. Read. I know most of you are literate, so read. Your hope is going to be rooted in nothing. It's going to be based in nothing. It'll be, as a whole, you will falter. You will fade away. You will be defeated. Just like my school, just like so many others, and as a whole, just like times past, there's nothing new under the sun since the days of the patriarchs. Men who believe, yes, we believe in God, we are of hope in God, but they want anything to do with his law, with his word, with his ways. He took the time to have it written, spoken to, even brought up prophets and a fair number of faithful seminarians make sure that this was available to us. So, don't be private. Don't say, oh, I'm not like a, I'm not a public school. I'm better than a public school. But I'm like a public school. I am the, I am the social accumulation of, of mediocrity when it comes to history, politics, economy, education, and theology. All publicly supported, but the one controversial aspect I have is that I every so very often, without spirit, without authority, without taking the 
conviction, the commitment, and the courage. Live it out, prepared to sacrifice personal worldly gain. The word. Talk about Jesus. But I'll talk about verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's Christ perfect. And he expects us to live perfectly. By his grace, we are forgiven. But the, tra- but the trajectory, the growth, the maturity, the development, the end goal, each step of our days, whether you're a teenager, in your 20s, 30s, like myself, and so on forth, so forth, even you're currently, if you're in 80s and 90s, but with the precious blood of Christ. Be perfect as I am perfect says the Lord, be holy, for I am holy. Says the Lord, be privately separated unto him. Don't be like a public school. Whether you be in the ministry or alone at home. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, signing out.